Hello and welcome back to Wolf vs. Ponies. Uh, of course, I am Wolf, and uh, after being locked out of the, the Canterlot High School for a while, I just decided to go through a window, and I found myself in the library. Uh, hopefully now, Catastrophe won't find me. So, uh, uh, yeah, while I'm here, I might as well do another review of one of the episodes. This time, do princesses dream of magic sheep? The answer to that question is no, surprisingly. So, at first glance, this episode could have been better, but I'm not going to talk a whole lot about that. It was still it was a pretty good episode overall, actually. So it opens up with Nightmare Moon, or with or with Luna dreaming about becoming Nightmare Moon again, only to be stopped by the main six. However, when we see the dark entity known as the Tentabus come in, that's when that's when the entire plot actually really begins, because the Tentabus then escapes when Luna has had these consistent dreams over and over, but this time with the Tentabus leaving, it ends differently, where the main six become Super Saiyans, and then defeat and reform Nightmare Moon back into Luna, which that isn't supposed to happen, which then, that is where everything, that is where everything bad starts from. Then, the main six are doing some sort of pet thing, a pet grooming activity, uh, that's a first, even for Dash, I must say. And all of them didn't get any sleep because they all had the same dream about a shadow monster, aka the Tentabus. After it escaping, we uh, then learned about the Tentabus's background, how Luna created it because of what she did as Nightmare Moon. She used it as sort of, she used it as not really a cripple, but as a tool to keep herself guilty for what she did as Nightmare Moon. She wanted to make sure that she could never forgive herself, which is kind of weird why she would punish herself by creating this dark entity to constantly remind her of the evils that she wrought upon the ponies. It really shows what kind of princess she is. I mean, she really does care about the lives she affects. But aside from that, we then also get more information that if the Tentabus ever escapes into reality, it can create a living nightmare, which every time I saw that episode, which was about three, t three or four times, the first thing I thought the Tentabus was like was Dark Eye. I mean, they both create nightmares, and they can both create a nightmare in reality. So that's what really made me think of it as Dark Eye. So then we have the Inception, she Inception scene where they all have to go to a bed, and Luna can share can enter each of their dreams. I will admit though, Pinkie Pie falling to sleep after her hyperactivity will still go down as one of my funniest moments, or it will still go down as one of the funniest moments in the series, especially with Pinkie Pie. So the first dream we get is Tabitha St. Germain's other character, Rarity, where she dreams of dresses instead of other things. Then as the Tentabus comes in, it affects the dream by making the dresses turn into the walking dresses. That joke is actually made by Catastrophe. But Jermaine wanted to team up with herself in that episode, but the writer said no, with Luna denying that right of the two of them teaming up after the Tentabus. I will say when it, I will say some of the other dreams were funny, like da like how Dash's dream is adventure and beating up the uh, changelings and her biggest fear is a happy dream as if it was like a child's cartoon. I will say that is also another one of the funniest moments in the entire episode. But throughout the entire thing, Luna keeps blaming herself. She can never get over the idea that she can be for that she can be forgiven of of what she did as Nightmare Moon. And I mean that's kinda sad actually that she can that throughout the entire episode she keeps going back to the idea that she must punish herself for the deed she caused as Nightmare Moon. Okay, I'll, I'll keep referring to that mainly because it's prominent throughout the entire episode. Then, when we learn that Pinkie Pie is the one to screw up, big shocker there, everything else goes terribly because then Luna has to use a lot more magical ability to create a shared dream with everybody in Ponyville. We then go to the fight scene, and the f another funniest part was seeing Macintosh, Big Macintosh transform into a princess. Every time I see that, Big Mac will always remind me of a brony, 
Like every everything he has done up from lesson zero has sort of been a brony like. He collects dolls for little children or slash little girls, although little shy will defend himself saying that they're action figures. And everything else he's done, especially this. This is like the biggest scene where Big Macintosh actually represents a brony wanting to become a princess. I mean, there are quite a bit of people who like to become Alicorn OCs, and I mean, this just takes it one step further. And then after, and the episode later ends with Luna finally accepting that she can reform, that she no longer needs to keep punishing herself for the deeds she caused, that the ponies of Ponyville have actually forgiven her for her deeds, especially since it's already been one full year. So the moral of, so the moral of this lesson that I got was, you, if you make one mistake, or one thing that you can't, that you personally can't forgive yourself, don't continuously blame yourself for it. And I mean, this episode actually relates to me quite a bit, because during my tennis season, Whenever I would make one mistake, I would actually have a lot of rage built up because of that, and at times I would actually break my racket off of the ground, start cursing, even if it was during practice. That's not that's not only how seriously I took it, but that's how seriously angry I was at myself. And I kept blaming myself for all these little mistakes. I could never let that go. And I'd had, and I'd barely win some of the times. If it was in practice, I probably would have lost. But in a in a game scenario, I mean, I pulled out probably because of luck. Because I when after all that rage, I should have let I should have just lost the match. But for some reason, I didn't. I pushed myself harder. And yeah, like Luna, she kept blaming herself for that one incident, and she can never forgive herself until the end when the ponies told her that everyone else forgives her. I know my friends have have told me that, even my coach, they told me to start toning it down and to not become so serious. And I'm still trying to do that, but hopefully this episode can, can serve as a reminder of not only my anger, but hopefully I can remember this episode and for my final tennis year, I can actually think of this episode as to calm me down, per se. But, all that aside... It was a pretty great episode, actually. I mean, if I had to rate this like I did for Lullaby for a Princess, I have to give it probably a uh, seven out of ten. It, I mean, it was a really great episode. No matter no matter what criticism there is, I will think that it's a good episode. So, this has been Wolf vs Ponies, and I will see you all later.